understand. But King David asked this question, who can approach God? Who can stand before him in his holy place? And he answers, he who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his mouth to deceit, who's not a liar essentially, clean hands and a pure heart, and hasn't ever spoken a word that is untrue. Is that you? It's not, not me. I ask you this question. Wouldn't it be great to be accepted the way you are right now? That would be great, but it's not true. And it's not possible right now. Just the way we are, if we were to approach God as we are, we don't have clean hands. We don't have pure hearts. You know what clean hands and pure hearts are? That means a month, the greatest commandment that I think we make so light of. It says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Who's done that for one moment of their lives? Everything. I, I haven't. I haven't met a man who has either, or a woman. Who can keep that commandment? It is the greatest and the most difficult. That's just the beginning of the clean hands and pure hearts. Because he says those who haven't, haven't raised their mouths in deceit, who haven't spoken deceitfully, we've all told lies, and many lies, lies about others, lies about ourselves, lies about God. Every time we sin, we say that God is not worthy of our obedience, and we call him a liar. We've got a serious problem of unclean hands, unclean heart and mouths that lie. He says those are the only ones that can approach that have clean hands and a pure heart. But this is the beautiful thing. Though all of us, all of you in this room and all of us on this stage do not have clean hands or pure hearts. We have hearts that deserve hell. We have hands that deserve hell. Infinitely. None of us in here were claimed to be blameless. But there was a man in 1 Peter that spoke about, there was one who had no deceit in his mouth. One who did not. He was reviled. He was treated poorly, but he did not treat them that way in return. There was one who had lived a perfect life, who actually had clean hands and a pure heart. But instead, he was treated in a way that we should have been treated brutalized and punished for all sins. So I'd ask you this. Can you really stand before God the way you are right now? Can you approach him and stand before him? The way we are right now by ourselves? No, we cannot. But this is why, this one that I spoke of, the man Christ Jesus who lived a perfect life, a life that none of us have lived or could who not only lived a perfect life, but died a sinner's death. Why? So people with hands that are not clean and hearts that are wicked could actually come to God. And I tell you this, many of you have probably heard the gospel message, but I would ask you to consider this. What are you putting your hope in? That you will approach God one day because you've been a good person? He said, clean hands and a pure heart. Do you think you can approach God because that one day, uh, at youth group, you prayed a prayer and fill out a card, but you've lived no differently afterwards? Or is your faith and hope and trust in the fact that you can never earn your salvation, and that salvation is by grace and grace alone, through Christ alone, and by God alone, and no man can earn it, but it is a gift, not to the one who works to earn salvation, but to the one who believes that God is willing to cleanse sinners like and so I would encourage you to go to the God who receives sinners, not because you think you're worthy, but because his son is worthy, that he paid a, paid a price for people like us to come and stand before him and to be accepted and actually to be loved, to not be rejected, but to be loved and embraced because of the work of another and not of our work. I'd say go to that God. This next song is called Majesty and Misery, and it's about all that Christ endured to save sinners like us. Thank you for listening.